COVID summer, everyone. It's Melissa here from Melissa Shares. And while it's been a while, we are doing okay, safer at home here in Los Angeles. And I wanted to talk to you now that it's June and school is out for the summer, to talk to you about our summer plans and specifically about mommy camp. This might also be daddy camp or grandparents camp, depending on where you are. But where we are, we don't have summer camps really opening yet, and so my summer camp money has been refunded, and I am now scrambling to kind of catch my breath and make a plan for the summer that I feel good about, that I can afford, and that's gonna stimulate my children enough to keep them sort of out of my hair and satisfied. So I wanna go through the themes and resources that I've gathered for my particular family, and obviously I want to share these things with you so that they are helpful and useful, but obviously they're really modifiable. And so I want you to keep that in mind as I share with you. I am an Amazon affiliate, so I'm gonna link a few Amazon links for some products that I have purchased or gathered for this summer, but I'm also drawing upon items we already have here at home. Last but not least, stick around till the end because I wanna talk about ways to minimize costs and really make these materials go as far as possible for you, your family, and maybe some other families in your community. So we'll talk about that at the end. First things first, I am coming up with themes for my kids for the summer. So let me share those themes with you. I am basically devising a theme per week and I'm just gonna rattle them off uh, one by one with you and share with you some of the resources that I've gathered for that theme. So my first theme coming up is Americana and Flag Day because Flag Day is coming up this weekend. It is the celebration of our adoption of the American flag as our symbol for our country. And while now is a very political, uh, politically charged and divided time, I feel like it's actually a relevant time to revisit our flag and our values and really our core beliefs that I think are inherently good. And also the idea of symbolism and what what it is to have a symbol that represents you or maybe doesn't represent you. So Flag Day is coming up. I'm gathering items that are both for Flag Day in June as well as the 4th of July since we always do have a big celebration here where we live. And here's my first prop that I wanted to share with you. This is our stamp collection. So I've done a video about this in the past, but I have been saving stamps that come on letters and most of them come, the boring ones, come with flag stamps. We are going to be going through our stamp collection this week and we're gonna be pulling out all of the stamps that have American flags on them. And while that sounds like a boring stamp, there's actually so much diversity in American flag stamps that it's really interesting to look at them over a period of time. So that's one activity that we're doing is just looking at our stamp collection. The next activity that we may do is we may select a few of these American flag stamps and do some form of collage. For um, the flag, there's also a lot of resources out there about the American flag, the number of stripes, the number of stars, which has changed over time. And so um, we're just gonna start visiting that with my six and a half year old and my three and a half year old in anticipation of Flag Day. I meant to say, for Americana Week, we're actually planning to do an American flag doll quilt. So we are gonna be doing paper American flags with my kids, and we're gonna be doing strips of red and white fabric and some star fabric to do little quilts that are super Americana. We can do them for Flag Day or for 4th of July, but those will be like a really beautiful product that we produce as a family. So that is my first theme. Since it's semi-related, I'm just gonna jump ahead to 4th of July Americana Week. So in preparation, I have ordered a few very basic supplies on Amazon. So for the 4th of July, we always, always have a parade in our neighborhood led by the fire department. I don't know if that is gonna be pulled off this year with the quarantine. So we are definitely, definitely decorating. For the 4th of July, we're also gonna be doing things that anyone can do for no money. And one of them is learning songs that are American classic songs. Um, the Star Spangled Banner would be one. I've also ordered, and it hasn't arrived yet, but I've ordered the Stephen Foster Songbook CD, which is a very classic repertoire of American songs that I grew up with because I have family from Kentucky. So we're gonna be playing the those songs as well. We are also doing classic Americana games, which I think are really, really fun to introduce to children so that we can take a trip back in time in America to think about children who were here before us many generations ago. Marbles, I ordered these for about $10. I'll link them down below. These marbles come with two 
big shooters. So I'm gonna be introducing marbles to my kids. Um, the other children's activity that I've already started introducing is cross stitch or all kinds of needlework. This was actually done together with myself and my three and a half year old. And this is just a piece of cardboard, a hole punch. It's hard to see, but I actually marked the stitches for her. This is a cross stitch that's gonna be a picture frame for our summer, so I'm very excited about that. I've also been pulling out just other odds and ends that I have for decorations, just papers and ribbons and recycled materials that I have. I have a magazine from Monticello where um, Thomas Jefferson's home was. It has a lot of interesting just things to browse that I'm gonna be putting out for my kids. I grabbed the Hamilton soundtrack, which we love, which has a lot of history. I have a strange assortment of historic uh, DVDs. We're gonna look at these and see if they're appropriate. A red, white, and blue shopping bag. We're gonna work on state facts. So we live in California and we're going to study a little bit more about California, like our state flower, our state bird, our state reptile, and look at our own state flag. So we are a United States and we're going to drill down a little bit on our specific history here in California. And then you guys, I'm so excited. We are making corn husk dolls. This is a really fun children's toy and I've saved and dried our corn husks in preparation and I've printed up instructions that um, describe the process of how to make these. These would be considered an American Indian craft that children made. I have information on the prairie and uh, American buffalo and then I've gotten out all of our Americana children's books. So George Washington's Teeth, Johnny Appleseed, one about Abe Lincoln and another one about presidents. This is a little bit of preparation, but not a lot that had to be purchased. I happen to own a Viewmaster. Because we have family in Kentucky and we can't go visit them right now, I thought it would be really fun to order some discs to put in here that will take us on a little virtual road trip to Kentucky. So I have some mammoth caves and some horse country and some other discs that for, you know, maybe $10 we have in our repertoire to put in here and it's kind of fun and a little novelty for them. I'm choosing for every theme week some sort of screen time for my kids that works into that theme. So I haven't chosen an Americana or 4th of July one yet, but you'll see with my next theme that I have a TV show or a documentary that my kids can watch so that I get a little break, but they're still kind of learning and thinking on the theme. The next theme, you guys, is frogs. Now the frogs theme has not always been on my list, but we recently watched an amazing nature documentary and it's available on Amazon Prime, so I'll link that up down below. It's called Fabulous Frogs, and it's one of those narrated nature programs that really was so interesting, so visual, so gorgeous, great learning for my kids, and it made me think of so many extension activities. So the frogs theme is very rich, and you may have these items at home already, you may have these toys already, but basically I pulled my frog books, and I will be pulling more um, once I get time to go look at the shelves. We are gonna be re-watching Fabulous Frogs. We are gonna be playing frogs in the water table and my kids like to make a little habitat for them with stones and leaves. It's really a lot of fun. We're going to be putting water beads in our water table one day. These um, were a total novelty and treat. I never get these for my kids but we're going to be um, hydrating them up and they're going to be gelatinous like frog eggs. I have and have not used in probably two years this green jello, you guys, and I'm so excited to have green jello and a frog cookie cutter. We have tapioca pudding, which also is uh, sort of symbolic of gelatinous frog eggs. I sprung for $5 on Amazon, you guys, a frog mold. This is a chocolate mold or soap mold. It came with the instructions for both, but we might also try it as a um, bath bomb mold or we can try it as a jello mold. So I'm very excited, I'll link it up. I think it was $5 well spent. Uh, in terms of other frog activities, I'll just rattle off for you. We're gonna do frog habitats in a shoebox diorama style, leapfrog relay races, slingshots, that pertains to the muscles and how the frog muscles work, uh, webbed hand drawings where we do hand tracing and then make them webbed, and frog songs. This is my camping week, you guys. Um, and I should say that we have a Girl Scout in our household and I have subscribed for two weeks of Camp in a Box for her. It's a $45 
box that comes in the mail and it has corresponding live um, content for her to participate in for the week. I'm probably going to be repeating some of the content that she has from Girl Scout Camp with my camping theme. If you have a tent at home or a teepee or you can construct some type of fort, you can pull off indoor camping or outdoor camping. I have ordered some materials here that just have a summary or summer camp theme like this flip flop young reader book. Um, perhaps most excitingly, I have also ordered these owl pellets that we are going to dissect. These came in a pack of 10 and I very quickly told some other moms about them and they bought the extra owl pellets off of me for their kids. So these I highly recommend. They're very coveted and really are exciting to my kids. Um, we also just have a lot of books on owls, camping, things that you might see at summer camp like ants, Camping with my dad, Symmetry in Nature, Berenstein Bears Go to Camp, Accounting Book, Owl Moon, um, and then I have some kids activity books that are like outdoor activity books. I'm lumping this all into camping. We're gonna make s'mores, we're gonna do a fake campfire, we're gonna do all the things. I also have some natural clay that we've been playing with at home and we haven't used it up yet. So this clay, doing things with pine cones, and then these packing materials came and I felt like these would be really fun to make for a doll to make a little like aero mattress, a uh, pillow sleeping bag something. Um, so we are gonna be like stuffing this in a little uh, a sleeping bag for dolls. That is camping week. You do it the way you do it, but I think it's super fun to do in the summer with kids. Next up is science. I know that this is gonna vary depending upon the age of your children and your interests, but I have just gone through the house and pulled any science or activity books that I have. Um, I have things like Magic School Bus, so we're gonna do Solar System. I have some bug toys. Um, if you follow me, you know that we're doing this stuff all the time at home. Some things about the sun, science experiments. These are like young, learning at home kind of materials. You'll be glad to hear I have gathered the citric acid that I need to do bath bombs. Bath bombs are gonna be something we do. Slime is gonna be something that we do. So we have a few experiments in mind and that is gonna be science week. Also science related, I got this idea from another mom who suggested an out school class on geodes and rocks. I have not signed up for the out school class yet, although they sound really great, but I already had some stuff around the house, you guys. Geology, rocks, and crystals is this week's theme. I have this little discounted crystal kit. I have a little crystal-like folder. I did spring for maybe $30. This was my biggest ticket item. This is a geode kit. I think for two children in my household and for myself, it's worth it. And this comes with some literature and the geodes that we're gonna crack open. I also um, have cribbed some notes uh, from an out school class that I think I'm gonna do on my own. This is a um, geode and crystal watercolor class. So this is really art on how to draw and depict stones and crystals. Um, and then I have um, some books from our library. So a rocks and minerals book that we have and a volcano book that we have. Rock candy, which is something that you can do easily at home. A crystal growing kit you might be able to just pull together yourself from items in your pantry and laundry room. Certain weeks are gonna be more robust than others, but my goal is to provide one activity per day that is new and novel and learning that pertains to the theme. And the rest of our time is gonna be in the swimming pool. Summer would not be complete without a water, underwater, beach, or tropical theme. Here we are traveling to Hawaii and underwater. I have the books that I could gather from around the house. Magic School Bus, a pop-up book, this is a math book that's underwater and more of a board book for my younger child. I'm gathering things like our um, plastic animals that can go in the water table and even some loose parts or recycled materials like some packing material that came and some bubble wrap that came that felt very underwater. We're gonna just be using our imagination that week to do water table play, sprinkler play, swimming pool play. There's a big Pacific documentary that we watched that my children might wanna revisit on Amazon Prime. I'll find that and link it for you in the description box. We have the Moana soundtrack that we love and then some uh, 
proper Hawaiian music on a CD that we've had from the thrift store. This is a theme that I think is really helpful if you were in a hot climate like we are and we were gonna be wet and underwater and learning about nature and feeling like we're on vacation even though we are still at home. Um, the last concepts to share with you are chicken coop week because we have chicks arriving very soon in two weeks. When our chicks arrive, they're gonna be in a brooder for six weeks, so we actually have time this summer to be preparing their home. We have cleared the area and made a plan, but we still need to be building their chicken coop where they're gonna go live. This is a wonderful thing to focus on, and I do have on a bookshelf a whole section of chicken books and bird books. We also have these wonderful wooden eggs that are super fun to play with. Egg cartons, learning about how chicks develop in the egg because our chicks are currently incubating right now, and so chicken week, it might just be scattered throughout the weeks this summer. Who knows? We're gonna have baby chicks all summer. Next on my list, I think will be on many of your lists, and that is handwriting, math, and the library challenge. Our local library always has an in-person reading challenge, and this summer it's online. So I am logging our reading and writing activities day by day so that my daughter can earn some virtual prizes, and there's some jigsaw puzzle that we're making along the way. And that's something that we're working on to maintain her academic skills over the summer. I'm also planning a lot of sensory activities and fun activities that are gonna incentivize her to still be doing schoolwork even though it's summer camp work. One of the things that is throughout our summer is letter writing and pen pen writing. Specifically, we are writing to family that we cannot see this summer or really at all for the foreseeable future because of COVID. So for Frogs Week, we're going to write letters about what we're doing for Frogs Week. And my daughter is actually happier to do writing if she's writing a letter to a friend. And she's really happy to write to a friend if there's a fun stamp to put on the card. So this was money I think well spent to purchase the available for stamps in the themes of frogs. This is a, a two-pager, but under here is the Oh Beautiful for Spacious Skies. It's the Oh Beautiful poem and the corresponding stamps that describe the American landscape. That's going to be for 4th of July week. I also have American Gardens, if you're more of a garden type. Postcard stamps that are all underwater coral and fish to send postcards about that week. What else do we have? I think that's all. Along the theme of loving stamps and correspondence, we're using that as a vehicle for practicing writing. We're also gonna be doing shaving cream on the sliding glass door. We're gonna be doing other kinds of um, handwriting for even for my little one in sand, just on a tray. I would really relish any of your tips that you might be using this summer with your children to kind of keep up the learning and prevent the summer slide. Obviously reading to your kids is the number one way to do that. I promised you at the end of this video and I'm sorry to ramble but I promise you that I would talk about ways to stretch your dollars so that you're not spending $300 like maybe I spent maybe $200 on all of these new materials that I ordered obviously I'm pulling from items that we have but you know if I'm only doing these activities for one week, you guys, I really feel that it's possible for me to use some of these items one week and pass them down to my neighbor's house for the next week for their kids to use. And we have a lot of kids in our neighborhood who I know would really enjoy and could be trusted with these materials. So things like my frog toys, um, things like a lot of these books, Things like my frog mold, you know, the moms can Instacart their own jello, but I've put some time and effort into things like ordering the owl pellets and dividing them already with some other families. So if you could get a few mommy friends or family friends or cousin households together, maybe you're not quarantining with them in a pod, but maybe you're planning alongside them and mapping out your weeks for the summer so that one person buys this thing, another person buys that, thing. Maybe the geode kit comes with more geodes than you need and you can dispense them to other families to really make your dollars stretch. Whatever your plans are, please leave a comment down below. I would really love to hear what it is that you're doing and what your kids and family is interested in. If you're setting up a tie-dye station in your front yard and you're letting everyone in the neighborhood cycle through it, let me know. That's kind of a fantasy that I have for the summer as well. As always, I really love my time spent on YouTube. It's been a long time, but I'm really trying my best to 
as a mom to do for my family and to spend as little as possible. And I would love to hear your feedback and share and learn from you in this community. So thank you for being here and thank you for leaving a comment and I will see you back here on my channel soon. Take care.